You're listening to The College Light Bulb, presented by The Coaching Educator, where we illuminate your college path. Here's your host, Rebecca M. Carroll. Hello, it's Rebecca, and I have a guest with me. Introduce yourself, please, Ken. Ken Jersha. Good to meet you, Rebecca, online. I know, I know. And I'm really excited about having Ken because he has a special talent, which we'll get to later. But as you know, with the College Light Bulb, we always have people come on and we like to find out about the educational journey because we want students to know and understand that everybody's path is different. And we want parents to understand that, that it's not always a straight line. Mine wasn't. Neus's wasn't. Every, almost everybody that has been on this show has had uh, just a little either hiccups or pivots. And so we always ask. So Ken and I actually met each other at a Catholic networking um, uh, breakfast. Right. So and we've got we've become um, actually very good buddies and <laughs> and that's great because we help each other's businesses. But in the meantime, I said, oh, you have to come. You have to come podcast to let us know about your story. So we're going to start out. I always ask, what was your educational journey? Um, it was a journey. In fact, I'd call it an exploration, especially for the first few years. Um, I was a um, I was a good student um, all throughout high school and did great um, in, especially in English and literature and theater and things like that. Uh, and um, through high school, I started doing theater arts and music and different things. Um, and even earlier than that, but I really focused on those things in high school and started doing musical comedy and, and dramatic theater and things. So fresh out of high school, I wanted to get into theater arts as a major. Mm -hmm. And I did that for a year. The very first play I tried out for, I got the dramatic lead um, in the production. It was Henrik Ibsen's The Master Builder. Oh, yes. If you're familiar with that, very dark piece. And I was on stage for all except six minutes. And the upper class people were very jealous that I got that role, (laughs) (laughs) which was awkward to say the least, Uh, but did that show and another show afterwards and then joined the Saratoga Drama Group in um, in California and continued on with theater for a while. Um, But at the same time, I found the... The late nights, the the practice every single day and everything just so totally consuming that I didn't like that lifestyle. Um, okay. And so I shifted to graphic design. Still in the art. Still in, you know, still and, in the and honestly, arts. people who are artistic, we found our Lee, who does all of our IT stuff. She designed our website. She's, she designs the websites for talent students. The same thing. She's a musician that is just fabulous, and but she has this art ability with her. So that doesn't surprise me yeah. that you... So graphic design, and this was at a time where... What was going on with graphic design? Um, it was... Um, after the Andy Warhol time, and okay. or right at the end of that, but there was a lot of really um, experimental art going on. And so one of the things that I experimented with was how to do three-dimensional silk screening. Oh, and yeah. actually got a great um, um, uh, grade on the project, that I, the final project I turned in, even though the... the um, project itself was still wet <laughs> oh <my laughs> because goodness. it wouldn't dry fast enough because I was laying up the, the, the screen yeah. print so fast. Um, over and I remember you, days. well, when I was in college, we built it yep. as part of the class. And there was, I remember the squeegee, something doing, right? yes. Yeah, you're squeegeeing the, the, yeah. the paints or inks really through loved that class. the screen. Yeah. Other than I had a very, he was from... Paris, and um, I don't think he liked deodorant. Talented <laughs> artist, but we were suffering because I remember we were in the basement of a building, and it was really closed in, and it was really challenging. But he, um, I remember silk screening; it was really cool. Yeah. yeah. So that was the first time any um, any of the instructors there had seen a, a 3D silk screen project, um, and I was I was really enjoying my my art program. But the lead instructor for the art department um, 
wasn't doing art full time. In other words, he wasn't expressing himself create, creatively. Mm -hmm. um, he was teaching and working hard at that, but he also had to run a printing shop to be able to support himself. Oh. And I saw some of his original work and realized well, first off, do I have the talent and the commitment to work at this for 20 or 25 years and maybe have to do a different business? On the side. On the yeah. side to be able to support my artistic desires. Yeah. And I decided, so that was my second um, uh, career um, uh, education that I stepped aside from. Um, but I went back to part of what I really loved was doing music. And so pretty extensively throughout the 70s especially, I played a lot at weddings and parties and churches and um, did funerals, uh, receptions, things like that, coffee shops and nightclubs. Mm -hmm. um, and then after doing that for a number of years, I um, found myself married and I was going to have a kid and realized that, you know what, um, this is a pretty chaotic lifestyle to support a family with. Yeah. Uh, and so being out late at night, having people talk over me, blow smoke in my face and offer me drinks for tips <laughs> um, and wanting a little bit more of a steady income, I, I um, got into the technology field. And so I, I worked at a company called Monolithic Memories and the National Semiconductor. And after a couple of years of that, I worked at a place called HP, Hewlett Packard. Mm -hmm. And so they hired me with just a couple of years experience in technology uh, into a technician program. And I was there for uh, over 20 years. Wow. And through that period of time, I got through their National Technical University, which was an um, an in-company um, uh, curriculum program. I got the equivalent of a uh, Bachelor of Science in Computer Science. I learned everything about networking, programming, um, advanced user interface design, and a number of other things. So when you were doing this, so HP, did, did you have to do it around your work schedule, or did they build the program into pieces? The program was during the work week. Okay. And so you could sign up for a course, and as long as you had your management support because it was in a direction that your career was going, they'd say, yeah. Or even if it was tangential or it might help you go in a different direction for your course, for your um, career path, you could still do that if your management wanted to support you. So um, just one of the courses was, um, it was almost introductory by today's standards, but it was called Engineering in a Network Environment. And what that focus was, was around the networking technologies that existed in the 1980s, so okay. 83, 84. And so it really dug into all the networking standards, the protocols that were used for communicating between devices and on networks. And that was kind of the, the start of my, my computer technology training, and that was about 1983 or 84. Wow. So that's interesting. Do you did you get the sense that there were a lot of people taking advantage of it or just avoiding technology? Because I, re I know there were many. I remember being in school and professors were like, oh, I don't even get on a computer. I mean, so now it's everybody has their computer in the classroom. and Yeah, you have to remember that this is Hewlett Packard and they were a technology leadership company for years and years. Yeah. Going back to the 40s with um, their first product, which was an audio oscillator that they sold to the Disney Corporation for working with, with movies. Um, everybody in HP was earnest about their love for technology because they knew that the company mm -hmm. was solidly entrenched in and wanted to offer new and exciting products in the technology domain. We all wanted to be part of that, so we all wanted to learn more about technology. So it was encouraged, it was allowed, and, it, and people were enthusiastic to do it throughout yeah, the corporation. That's great. Yeah. yeah, that's something to think about, that, to, to provide a certain certification. or So you worked 20 years... In HP. Right. Well, now you're back to music. What's going on? Tell oh. you, where's the blip? Well, so there's there's another 20 years in between almost. I was, um, um, because we had some family health issues back in our hometown, we moved back to 
um, uh, the area to take care of uh, family health and to be with family members as they got older and, and make sure we got some good quality time with them. And so I continued in the technology domain for almost another um, 15 years. Okay. Um, after that, we moved back to Boise, and now um, I'm finding myself with more time and the opportunity to really learn about and study music in a way that I haven't before. Um, and so, yes, I'm doing more with music now. Yeah. And you're a real estate uh, agent. That's right. I, um, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in lifelong learning um, yeah. since I kept on learning all lifelong. Um, once I got out of technology about a year and a half ago, I um, decided um, to go back and get my real estate license. And so there was an intensive course of study for a couple of weeks and some exams. And then I found out that once I was done with getting my real estate license that I had a lot more courses to take. So <laughs> I sp I've spent the last two months in classrooms and doing online learning, yeah. even to support just the fact that I've gotten the license. So, yeah. um, and in the process, I've also been studying music for the last year and a half since I've had the time too. And that's nice to hear because, you know, it, with real estate, you want someone who's working with either looking for a house or selling your house, you want them to be really um, knowledgeable Right. Because there's yeah. a lot of error. There's a lot. There's a big, big, wide open space for error, especially um, in contract reading. I find that people, I have to do a lot of contract reading. I, I'm a mediator of the court as well. And there's just a lot of reading of contracts within my position, believe it or not. And, uh, and, and every year you have to be updated. I mean, that's I, right. I've got a class on June twentieth that just covers all the new laws mm -hmm. that go into effect real, in regards to real estate as of July first. Um, yeah. And uh, but you're right, the contracts are incredible. It, they're um, I forget the number of lines, but each page has seventy or eighty lines of uh, possible contract mention, mm -hmm. and um, it's called a buy uh, purchase and sale agreement. And if you get any one of those things wrong, it can jeopardize the deal itself, cost somebody thousands or tens of thousands of dollars. In fact, I heard one where the because the real estate agent didn't move quickly enough with something, they got sued for $150,000 just on a deal here in Idaho because they didn't deliver the purchase and sale agreement addendum quickly enough. So it's it's very exacting, both yeah. in in what's in the contract and how you're supposed to handle the contracts. Right. And I know now there's a real decline in, uh, well, at just the minute a duplex goes up, it's snatched up. So there's some issues now. I mean, people are really struggling with housing. We see it in the newspaper all the time. Um, so that's great. That's good. I mean, you you come to the table with a ton of knowledge and just other experiences and owning other properties. And I think that's good. I think that's a really, um, that's good. But I'm really curious about the music. <laughs> <laughs> really curious. Because before you came, Nias and I, we like to explore the person. And we found some of your music online. So tell us the website that people can find your okay. music. Uh, it's just kenjersha.com. Everybody's going to say, how do you spell that? It's K-E-N-J-E-R-C-H-A.com. Dot com. Dot com. Yeah. And, and the site is just that. going up and, and probably has had changes since you looked at it. In fact, I think it's got less music on it right now as they're working on the background, um, the back pages oh, and stuff. Okay. Um, but over the next uh, next few days, it should, should be pretty exciting. Yeah, we ended our work day... We had like an hour left and we were doing a lot of um, just clean up stuff and we we listened to three different songs and you have quite a range. I mean, you're, I, it was, we were both, whoa, whoa, <laughs> this was really something. So clearly you're a baritone. I'm, an, I'm um, one of my voice teachers told me I was a tenor bara bass. Tenor bara bass. Right. Okay, so tell us about that. So a high tenor can go up very high. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Luciano Pavarotti's and and the others can go up way above my range. Um, I can go up to an F sharp or a G, um, which is fairly high, but a high tenor can go up above that, and oh. it, and it really really varies um, some. Um, and I can go pretty low, too. I think you can tell I can yeah, sing yeah. pretty low. But, yeah, um, that's something. So do you do, well, obviously you practice. 
I know you have been involved with um, music at your church right. in wherever you've lived. And um, what do you do, though, to take care of your voice? What are some of the things that if someone wanted to get into doing music either on the side or full time, you must have some recommendations as far as what do they need to do to take care of their voice? And, sure. and I offered you some coffee and you said no because cream does this and because uh, <laughs> we're going to make you sing. <laughs> So, so the first thing I would recommend is stay, stay away from places that have cigarettes and, and a lot of alcohol. Okay. Um, alcohol will dry out the voice and um, cigarettes do a lot of long-term damage. Um, and that's part of why I you know, was not comfortable with that environment. Um, watch out for allergies and catching bugs. Um, dairy products can be the enemy of the voice. Um, also warm up before you... Uh, sing. You don't want to be just going in cold, and especially in early in the morning after you've been sleeping for a while, you want to make sure that you're exercising your voice, especially before you do anything extreme, either in pitch or in volume. Mm -hmm. um, and you want to always support your tones. So, yeah, that's interesting. The uh, so just in the IT because our we have our three questions we ask. So you had this educational journey. Clearly, IT, you, you gravitated to, you did well in. And what would you suggest? And I love that the company had its own, really, its own degree. Its own, yeah. Which is fabulous because that, no one's going to take that away from you. Well, it wasn't formally a degree, but it was the equivalent of a degree. Yeah, I can't imagine that it wouldn't flip right into one. Yeah. That'd be curious. We might want to do that as call. Boise State to see what they would do with that just out of, I have a feeling they would because there are, um, they're really recognizing um, adult learning and what people yeah. come to the table with. So, um, so if someone were going to get into the field that you spent the longest amount of time with, which is your IT, what would you suggest they do? Straight IT degree, engineering degree, what would you suggest? Well, so I've got to say I'm not as current as, you know, people that are right there, but there's a lot of um, um, specialization in apps for phones and iPads and, um, you know, uh, uh, Android phones and things like that. And so learning the application technologies that are there to develop something that will go in an app store is, is a great way that you can dabble and learn and demonstrate that you've got some skill okay. and maybe gravitate towards a, towards a company. Um, the question is, do you want to be that self-starter person that's going to come up with a million, million selling apps on the Apple, store, Apple App Store or do you want to work for a big company? They're very different environments. You could be, you know, working in your own in your basement, in your in your in your shorts and 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 t-shirt, and not worry about having the corporate overlords. Or you can say, boy, I really want to be able to go into an office where I can collaborate, share ideas, do different things. Yeah. Um, and so those are two different people styles, right? Um, I tended to like the collaborative, um, so I would both learn some of the things on like Myers-Briggs on yep. um, your personal style. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's a great um, course opportunity if you can get something like that. Also look at some of the aptitude testing for where your skill strengths are. I was told that I would be a great English teacher, writer, instructor, and it turned out that what I did in technology was I managed writers and trainers. <laughs> Oh, okay. okay. And I did that for, for mm -hmm. over 30 years. So mine came out because they used to have us do it by hand in school, and now they do do it with a computer, which kids, I think, lose out in some ways. But I came out under the umbrella of school counselor, which is also an umbrella of barbering, which I am a barber. I was a barber for years. So Those all under the different. same. <laughs> well, you work with a lot of people, a lot of change, yep. and you have to get the job done. So and you're, and you're actually talking with people while you're working. So correct, you, correct. So you mean your husband did what to the dog? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you mean that you didn't get an anniversary present? Are you crazy? No, it was kind of fun being in the barber shop because they would. Oh, I have to get this present. What do you think? And um, so the uh, wives always appreciated and girlfriends always appreciated the advice. There you, go. you can't just do that. 
you know, this whole thing of, oh, I don't do Valentine's Day. Well, you better because <laughs> yeah. you may think it's okay to not, but it does hit home. So let's get back to the music. And I see we forced you to bring your guitar. <laughs> you did, huh? <laughs> uh, yes. So I would like to see, can you play us some music and can we hear what you... Sure. The, the only question I think is, 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 should I do something that's an original piece or somebody else's? Um, well, let's do, let's do someone else's because we are absolutely going to have you on because, um, number one, I love music and I like what you're doing. And so you're going to be doing you coming in um, and being tortured by us a little more. So let's okay. let's start out with doing someone else's piece, and then and then we'll do a piece of yours maybe the next time we do this. Okay. When I am down and all my soul so troubles come and my heart burden be then I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and rest a while with me you raise me up so I can stand on mountains you raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. There is no life, no life without its hunger. Each restless heart beats so imperfectly. But when you come and I am filled with wonder, sometimes I think I glimpse eternity. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. You raise me up to more than I can be. Ooh, that was so good. That was just wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. That uh, That's just fabulous. And I really love that you're continuing to grow a talent. And I really encourage people. I mean, that's kind of the whole person thing, where if a student, uh, I have several students who are going either in medical field or they're going into engineering, but they have these other talents. And I really feel like companies want well-rounded people. Yeah. I think they want to, uh, I mean, I certainly appreciate that Nias is a builder because our room, you know, we wouldn't have been able to get this up and running and be able to do these really creative things and have people listen to, this is a gentleman who loves the theater, loves artistic music, loves doing things like that, but supported himself and had a really healthy, great opportunity in IT 
But now you're bringing it back around. You never let go of your music. Right, and one of the things that I've been doing, as I mentioned, continuing study, is really looking into the effects of music on the mind oh, and, and health. And I know you know this because you're in the education business, mm -hmm. coaching the education business, but um, I've known for a long time of the impacts of music. In fact, I have a friend whose son is autistic, and because of that, 20 years ago, I started looking at what effects music has on people with autism and other mental problems. And it helps people recover from strokes. It helps people um, come out of dementia and Alzheimer's and, and bring memories back that help them be present again. Um, we used to hear the term idiot savant for people who were musically very talented but couldn't communicate well. Well, some of those really were people who were autistic. And while they can't express themselves verbally well, they can express themselves beautifully through music. You yeah. think about somebody as sim simple as Mel Tillis, the country singer who had a terrible stutter. Yes. But when he started singing, the stutter went away. Yeah. Music has terms to soothe the savage beast, whether it's tension or mental disorder or other things. And so one of the things I'm doing now is kind of an outreach as I'm starting to look at some of the um, the transitional living, the assisted living, the homes for the older Which people. Which is huge. That and is I'm going to be starting yeah. to sing at some of those mm -hmm. with um, some of the people with, with metal. Um, yeah. No, I, th I think that is really, really good. I think that's a great, um, just a great idea to get into that because I know that people really enjoy the music they grew up with. And I think it's nice to to have that and that's that's a really strong memory and it does help the mind and i have a friend who's a mezzo soprano and she says that she has so much music in her head she can't play the radio when she's driving because <laughs> she just cannot hear music outside of what she might be working on for a piece because it just makes her just too much but she was a child prodigy as well so i don't i don't know i would be really interesting to see where she's at as far as that but well thank you so much so it's great to hear that if a, a student is talented I would continue to grow your talent I would continue um, because you're you may have another 20 years of just you know doing weddings and, and really getting <laughs> well I think now with the internet too you can do so much so your YouTube channel will be up your website will be up, but we'll keep people posted and we'll make sure that we announce on your fa on the Facebook uh, page. We'll put the link up on YouTube to your website and um, encourage people to listen and like it and subscribe to his YouTube channel when it comes out and to um, consider if you're in the Boise area to uh, any you want a singer with your capacity to consider giving you a call or connecting with you. Okay, 408 242 SING. Oh, 408 242 SING. Which is 7464. Excellent. And we're going to sign out with Ken Jersha. Got it? <laughs> okay, that's awesome.